Hey guys, you're watching Boondocking with Dennis. On the road today, heading to Gonzales, Texas. One mission today, to find the famous Come and Take It cannon. Hey Tommy, do me a favor, roll my intro. Well, guys, on the way down the road, I always try to slow down at this spot, and I do see some bison today. Uh, I try to catch them when they're by the fence, and I think I just uh, broke that windmill with my uh, mental powers, guys. <laughs> Came to a dead stop. These ones aren't large. I, I, I'm not a bison expert. I know that's going to be hard to believe, but, I mean, I've seen some giant ones even at the uh, drive through exotic uh, safari park I, I got to hand feed some big bison and they're not the biggest ones so I'm not sure about the age of these ones and uh, I haven't even seen them the last few times I've driven through here they've been back in those trees so it is nice to see them and I'm I'm always hoping they're going to be right by the fence line here so I can get better shots of them but it's even in Texas it's pretty cool to just be driving down the road and see bison uh, right outside of Gonzales, Texas, guys, home of the uh, Come and Take It Cannon. So there's going to be a lot of Come and Take It flags. But first, we're going to stop at the world-famous uh, convenience store uh, just north of Gonzales, Bucky's. This is the beef jerky case. And I've done two or three videos from Bucky's already. But I'm going to stop in here and grab a few things to mail the friends. And uh, you, can, you can get a come and take it mug. You can get a come and take it flask. But instead of come and take it, we're just going to get out of here and head down the road to Gonzales. Gonzales was uh, settled by Green DeWitt and uh, Stephen Austin of uh, the Alamo fame in uh, 1825. A land grant from the Mexican government. Don't forget, this was Mexico back then. Uh, a lot of Apaches in the area, so they had a lot of trouble... Uh, for years, uh, fighting with the Apaches. They went uh, and contacted the uh, Mexican uh, militia that was uh, stationed about 70 miles away in San Antonio. And Gonzalez was provided with a very small cast iron canyon. Now, they knew uh, then that this cannon would best be used as a uh, scatter gun. And they used that to help uh, with their uh, conflicts with the uh, local people. Uh, the town began to grow and uh, things began to settle down. They, By the way, modern day Gonzales is absolutely beautiful. I'm going to give you a little tour while we're driving around. But um, Santa Ana, who is not very popular in the United States nowadays... Um, he was giving the uh, settlers of the region a hard time. Uh, even though they had Mexican land grants, he did not want them in this area. So um, Santa Ana was looking through some paperwork and realized the Mexican government had uh, given Gonzalez this cannon. And uh, he wanted it back. Well, Santa Ana sent two letters uh, to Gonzales to return the canyon. They said, uh, no, thank you. So Santa Ana sent six soldiers to retrieve the cannon. Uh, the people of Gonzales got word of this and they buried the cannon in a peach order, which it, where it's, uh, it, that would be about dead center downtown Gonzales. Um, so they tricked the six soldiers who returned back to San Antonio empty-handed. Now, word got back to the people of Gonzales that Santa Ana was sending 100 men this time. As soon as they heard that, uh, there was only 18 able-bodied men in town. They dug up the cannon and marched to the San Marcos River, 
That's the river that runs right through the campground we were at yesterday uh, to meet them head on. They also sent word out for reinforcements to other local communities. The women of the town took uh, the daughter of uh, Sarah DeWitt, took her wedding dress, and made the famous flag. Uh, cannon on the flag with the words, come and take it. Now, once they got to the river, no one could cross. The Mexican army couldn't cross. The 18 men on the other side couldn't cross. For two days, the Mexican army waited, looking for spots up and down the river uh, for a safe place to cross. This allowed time for uh, fellow Texans to come and uh, join the 18 men to defend the cannon and Gonzalez. Now, once reinforcements have uh, arrived, that's a uh, mastodon tusk, by the way. I thought that was pretty cool. Also, there's a cannon over here, guys. That is not the famous cannon. We're, we're going to get to that. So the settlers in the reinforcements crossed the San Marcos River. That kind of took the Mexican army uh, by surprise. They fired the cannon once. This world-famous cannon was fired once. Uh, the, uh, it killed one Mexican soldier, and that caused the Mexican army to retreat. That is the world-famous Battle of Gonzales uh, and the whole entire story of the come-and-take-it cannon. It's not. It goes on. Okay, more. Uh... Once the uh, Battle of Gonzales ended, uh, Stephen Austin wanted to move uh, forward to San Antonio and the Alamo, a more famous story. So the famous flag and the famous cannon went to uh, march to head towards San Antonio and the Alamo. Uh, the cart carrying the cannon broke down on the first day. Um, they couldn't move it. Uh, it was 79 pounds, which is pretty heavy. Uh, they buried the cannon, the cannon again. Once again, they buried the cannon at, uh, Sandy's Creek. Um, the famous message came out from the Alamo that we need help. Only one, uh, group of people responded to that, uh, plea for help at the Alamo. And that was 32 men from Gonzales. So only these 32 men knew the whereabouts of the original cannon. They get to the Alamo. They fight their way in to get into the Alamo where every last man perished days later. Every person who knew where that cannon was buried died for Texas independence at the Alamo. That cannon stayed buried for 100 years and eight months until major flooding exposed the cannon. This is the cannon. This is the famous come and take it cannon on display now at the Memorial Museum in Gonzales, Texas, free of charge. This museum is free of charge. Again, I am the only one here. It's a two room uh, museum. You saw the, uh, the monument out front, the reflecting pool. Uh, it's a beautiful museum. The gentleman working here is uh, very uh, knowledgeable. Actually, when, when you're here, you realize that Texas, as we know it as Americans, started because of this cannon and the people around it. This is Texas. Come to Gonzales. They have these beautiful homes here. They have uh, several other museums that I would like to see on uh, future trips. My uh, knee does limit me. Check out this gas station. I thought you car heads might like this. The old Magnolia gas station. It was very cool. Downtown, uh, a lot of it's still open. It has a center square, great uh, 
uh, courthouse and uh, uh, city hall, I should say. And uh, a lot of open businesses. Some of the side streets have kind of that closed look, but there's a lot of cool businesses in these older uh, buildings. I would definitely come here. You could spend a day here easily. And uh, there's a uh, the, the town uh, square here. It's called Confederate Square. There's a huge come and take it flag up there. They're everywhere in this area. These people are proud to be from uh, this town and uh, proud of the part their ancestors played in Texas independence. Uh, just outside of Gonzales, I, I just find so much cool stuff. Um, it seems like we've been finding a lot of old trucks lately. The park was awesome yesterday. I absolutely love Gonzales. I uh, love being on the road, guys. I appreciate you guys uh, coming back. Guess who's by the fence? Our buddy, the bison. These animals are just amazing. This was survival for Native Americans. This was their food, their hides. You, you know the story. They used every bit of that bison for survival to live off of different sizes there's some uh some have horns some don't i don't know if that's a male or female thing or just their uh, age but they are just so cool looking like if a cow was a biker he would be a bison <laughs> yeah you know what this one said when it uh dropped its kid off at school bye son yeah, I got to start my uh, jokes earlier. When I was um, driving here, I said to Devin, uh, ooh, I heard a bison. She said, of course I've heard a bison. Still on the road tomorrow, guys. Thanks for watching, everyone.